Well, hello again, and welcome to the VK6CS Fun with Amateur Radio channel. I've actually got some amateur radio in this one for you. So, uh, after the Woodhenge interlude and the uh, the road train, the iron ore road train, back to the amateur radio. Um, I popped into the local science museum yesterday, and uh, I was very surprised to learn that I'd won the door prize. Uh, which is a rather nice uh, Yesu FLDX2000 tube HF linear amplifier. Now, as I say in a broadcasting, these go up back in time to 1967. It's from Yesu Amusen. And I like the way the Yesu Amusen Co is written on the front panel there on the right hand side of the picture, as uh, it's, been, uh, it's been written in liquid metal. And that was how they used to do things back then. You know, I used to write on equipment, and this thing's built like a tank, you know, it's not like the sort of stuff you get today, I mean, the, the cabinet would be wafer thin, and, uh, you know, it's all going to be tacked together, and um, you know, plastic cable ties all over the place. This thing's really built. It's quite heavy, too. Um, I'll just put my hand, sorry about this, I'm holding the camera again today, because uh, I just need to show you the amplifier. And I need to move the camera around, so I can't mount it on anything to do that, unfortunately. There's my hand for scale. As you can see, you know, it's a pretty, pretty compact size. Now, uh, just a quick look at the front panel. It's got um, a nice, uh, nice linear layout. So on the left-hand side of the front panel there. There's a meter on the top, it will show you SWR, and on the bottom, it shows you the anode current. Uh, anode current goes up to 1.5 amps on the right hand side on the lower scale there, and uh, perhaps not surprisingly, from 750 milliamps onwards, it's in red, as would be the tube anodes if you left it in that region for more than a second or two, I suspect. Uh, okay, and then uh, below that, we've got power on off. Uh, which will be the main AC and an indicator. Then we've got standby and off, which is uh, and get another indicator there. And this will, um, I haven't looked at the schematic, but um, this is going to switch the supply onto the switching relay to allow the drive radio to operate the linear or uh, just leave it um, sitting in standby mode. Um, the SWR switch is next in the SWR position. You've got a forward and reflected switch here. So you put that in forward. You adjust the little wheel there for maximum deflection on the meter there and then you flick it to uh, no you don't you flick that one to reflected and you read off the uh, reflected energy on the on the meter there so it's got an inbuilt SWR meter which is really quite useful you've got plate tune pretty basic tank circuit and you've got band select switch which is going to be uh, selecting tappings on the tank coil it does uh, 80 meters, 40 meters, 20 meters, 15 and 10. Ominously it switched to 10. <laughs> uh, and as a plate load, anode load capacitor there. Okay. It's a very clean, uh, very clean looking unit. Um, now the condition of this thing is unknown. The power cord has been cut off. So I've no idea if it works or uh, if it works or not. But um, fortunately, I was able to download a schematic for it. Wherever that's gone, there we go. Got a schematic for it here. So, armed with this schematic, it should be really easy to uh, uh, sort any problems out that, uh, that this thing has. I mean, you've got um, these four uh, uh, funny looking uh, sieve things. And they appear to be connected to, uh, they, they go up to this, um, this arrangement here, which I would say is probably an early, uh, an early auto tuner. So you've got these, uh, these, these inductors here and these diodes, and they're probably doing, looking at phase and all that sort of stuff. So I'd say that's an early auto tuner. And there is the, um, uh, we plug the aerial in over here. So uh, armed with this information, I think it'd be pretty easy to sort out any problems that this uh, this unit may have. Okay, now looking inside uh, the capacitors. I mean, the capacitors don't look distorted. These look okay. 
So it's pretty dusty. I need to get the uh, the paintbrush to agitate the dust and the vacuum cleaner to uh, to remove it. Looking in there, I've got the resistors uh, across the rectifier diodes there. None of those look discoloured. Um, very old type of rectifier diode in there. I'll, I'll get a meter on those and check them before I uh, put any juice on it. Um, but that certainly looks okay. So apart from the dust, it will look pretty healthy. These main smoothing capacitors down here, um, they don't look distorted. There's no gunge on the chassis down there. So, you know, even though they're from 1967, yeah, they may be okay. And if they're not, I actually saw someone selling a, a replacement capacitor kit for this uh, very unit for about 45 bucks American, I think, on, the, on eBay. Coming across here to the PA compartment, or the amplifier itself, on the left there you can see the plate tune capacitor and then in the middle you've got the ceramic band selector switch and on the right hand side we've got the, the load capacitor the load capacitor here which is uh, really quite small it's the sort of thing you used to see in the old valve radios the old valve receivers and uh, I would say this has definitely been designed uh, to be tuned into a 50 ohm dummy load and then um, uh, be matched to the antenna with a, uh, with a matching unit or ATU as they're called, because if you back in the 60s and 70s, people used to just tune these into uh, because you've got the tank circuit here, it would have a pretty wide range of impedance matching. You can match that straight into the wire and forget the ATU. And um, you know, if you get uh, the, the higher the load impedance of the antenna, the, the, the higher the voltage is going to be across here. And uh, you know, I really wouldn't. Um, with five or six hundred watts output they reckon this thing's got um, I wouldn't be deviating too much from the 50 ohm load for that I think that would arc uh, fairly easily and of course this is why you get the wide spacing on the plate tune capacitor because the anode uh, um, the anode impedance of the tubes is far higher than the, uh, yeah, the antenna impedance okay so RF choke a bit dusty but this looks all fine Got some little uh, parasitic suppressors here, a few turns wound around uh, a resistor going to each anode. There's two uh, two valves here, and uh, if you can see them, there's another two down the bottom there. So it's four in parallel. It's supposed to be able to run 1200 watts PP, this unit. Uh, input. Five or six hundred watts output. Uh, down here, you might just be able to see... See the fan down there? 240 volts AC fan. So the fan's been... So it's a 240 volt fan, which is a good uh, a good sign. Uh, someone said they thought this was a 100 and, uh, 110 volt unit. Um, just looking over the back here, this looks all clean. There's no obvious uh, no obvious modifications there. No obvious modifications in here. Hasn't been modded to run in 11 meters, thank goodness. Um, and uh, this thing here, this thing here, that's going to be the uh, the cathode choke. So that's going to be the DC path for the uh, for the anode uh, anode current. And this capacitor here, this capacitor here, it's going to feed the RF into the cathodes. So this will feed the RF into the cathodes. This will be short circuit the RF frequencies and. Uh, this will be this will be pretty much a short of DC, and uh, this will be open circuit to the RF. This is the uh, the cathode choke. I'll show you that on the circuit. That's going to be somewhere near this auto tuner here. Feeble attempt at humour. Apologies for that. So that choke. <coughs> excuse me. L2, I suspect. There we go. So that's going to be the cathode choke it's connected to ground, and that goes up there, and that goes onto this this rail here, which is all the cathodes connected together. So that's going to be that one there. Uh, that uh, capacitor there, um, that 5,000 picofarad capacitor there, um, that's uh, keeping any DC off the uh, off the input. So uh, so there's no DC. It's going to be going down the coax to your drive radio. There's a little matching circuit here, a little fixed tank circuit. These aren't variable. A couple of fixed capacitors, a little coil there. Uh, just to uh, just to match the input. So uh, pretty uh, pretty standard, pretty simple uh, uh, circuit diagram. Uh, just have a look underneath it, see how it looks. Um, I'll just stick the um, stick the camera on a tripod for a second.
and uh, underneath it looks pretty clean. It's got the, uh, there's the tank circuit, uh, tank coil rather, there's the fan, there's the, uh, there's the two uh, filament chokes, so the heaters for the tubes will come in here, go off to the, uh, to the tubes, and this will just, uh, this will just uh, keep all the RF out of the, uh, out of the heater transformer. That's that circuit. So they will be, uh, this one here, these, these two chokes here, uh, no they won't be these two chokes here. <laughs> It's <laughs> looking for a viewfinder, sorry about that. So that's the cathode choke. So this one here, the, the, that, those two chokes there, and they're shown as being on uh, on ferrite, which is what these uh, these dashes are here. I'm going to be those two, these two here. Um, okay, and uh, there's the little, uh, there's the little fixed input circuit there. There's a little tank circuit coil there and the fixed capacitors either side of it <clears throat> and there's the switching relay which will switch the amplifier in and out curiously uh, without spending too much time looking at it it looks to me very much like this little tank circuit is in circuit when the amplifier is not so if you've got the amplifier switched out of circuit the relay at rest switches the input here goes up here through this and then up here and out there through the relay but it leaves a little tank circuit in place now the circuit diagram doesn't show that it shows it uh, as you would expect <clears throat> the circuit shows that which is what you would expect to see what actually um, appears to happen is that the RF comes in goes to the little fixed tank circuit then onto the relay and you see the switch then into the uh, switched into the amplifier down here or out to the uh, out to the antenna really a weird arrangement all right well uh, time's getting on this doesn't record for too long without shutting down but uh, I'll have a look at that anyway but uh, generally speaking I mean looking at it I mean these resistors here are not distressed at all um, all looks nice and tidy. This is how these things were made all these all those years ago. It was all tied. There's no no plastic cable ties in here. Um, just looking at this, um, this looks like a it's a 3.3k resistor. This is a modern era resistor. If you compare that to the one on the right hand side, that will be a uh, one from the period. Um, this has either been replaced or added. This orange wire looks a little peculiar as well. Doesn't look like it belongs in this. It uh, belongs in this loom. I think if if Yesu did that and it meant it was meant to be there, it would come up here and then it would it would look much more like it was supposed to be part of the original circuit. This look, this wire looks a bit short to me. So that's a mod or a repair. The transformer, fortunately, is wired for 240 volt operation. Again, if we look at the schematic. And we look at the auto tuner part of it here. <laughs> we can see that what they've done here is they've got <clears throat> a couple of different windings on here, and you can have 100 volts or 110 volts on either. And the same for the for the heater transformer down here. Um, and you can actually wire these in um, in series and in phase, so you can connect 240 volts across it, or 220 volts. So you connect the 220 volts from here, connect that zero to there, so two 220 volts to go across there. Where are we? And uh, the same for the same for the transformer down here. But it looks like that's already been done. In fact, it's got a 240 volt fan in it. The 240 volt fan is wired across the transformer. That's a zero there. We've got 117 volt there. And we've got zero there. And we've got 110 volts or 117 volts there, down there. So that 117 volts there is wired to that zero volts there okay so those windings are in series and in phase so this has been modified to run on 220 240 volts no problem i'll check that still that's true for the heater transformer because here's the power lead it's been cut off that's been done for a reason uh, it may well be that um, 
the heater transformer is not wired correctly, might not be in phase, might not be in series, but I'll check that before I apply any power. Okay, so I'll just lay that back down again. Now, I can't remember whether I mentioned the uh, the tubes on this uh, uh, earlier on in this video. I'm just looking at the time because this thing, this camera cuts out after 20 minutes. Now these tubes, I thought they were going to be 6 KD6s, they're actually 6 LF6s. And I thought, oh no! <laughs> um, anyway, I uh, got the spec for the 6 LF6 and I got the spec for the 6 KD6 and compared the two. And the 6 LF6 has a slightly higher anode dissipation and it has slightly less inter-electro uh, uh, inter capacitances. So, the um, you know cathode to grid and screen grid to anode and all this sort of stuff all the internal capacitances between the electrodes inside the tubes are less for the 6LF6 than they are for the 6KD6 and it has slightly higher anode dissipation so that makes it a better tube for HF amplifiers so hooray it's the better tube um, so that's all uh, that's all looking quite good um, I think looking at these tubes they're probably going to be healthy um, I think if they were old and tired they'd be a bit blacker there's a bit of gettering around the top there but it's not discoloured um, the fact that it would have been used on SSB you know it's only generating any real power really for a very short uh, period of time so duty cycle on these things is pretty low as long as um, whoever had it knew what they were doing when they were tuning it up um, uh, these tubes will probably be fine um, and uh, just looking at them I suspect that's the case uh, I think I think they'll be fine so what I'm going to do is uh, I'll I'll get all the dust out of it then I'll uh, well, I'll check the winding on the heater transformer just to make sure that's been seriesed up as well I'll get all the dust out of it um, I'll put it on a variac I'll take the anode caps off the valves then I'll wind the variac up and make sure the heaters come up okay and make sure the HT comes up okay and the reason I'm going to take the anode caps off the valves is that um, a lot of valves don't like um, anode voltage being applied when they don't have um, full heater voltage now my uh, battery is uh, flashing at me so it's going to cut out any second so that's what I'll do and if it's all good I'll put the caps back on and uh, put it back together and then I'll put some drive into it and uh, see if I can get some RF out of it so as always, hope you enjoyed that, found it interesting, thanks for watching, catch you next time.